Alrighty then, so let's get down to working directly with Cloud Movie Machine. We're gonna make some videos and get the party started. So first thing, of course, you're gonna do is log in with the email, your purchase email and the license key that was given to you when you purchase Cloud Movie Machine. I would suggest you click the remember for one month and that makes it kind of easier. You don't get logged out quite so much. You will have a session which you'll have to stay in for your procedures to work, but the system will remind you right, right before the session ends, which is about one hour. If you don't do anything in an hour, it could log you out. So go ahead and we log in, and this is your home page, of course. And when this video training is done, you're going to have a link to it right here. Uh, meanwhile, you've got your news, any new videos we'll post here any system status and I'm just going to tell you right now that we will probably have about an hour of downtime once a week and we'll do that late on Sunday nights just to back everything up and and uh, you know make sure we have everything maintained properly for you so this is a brand new account so the first thing you want to do really is that we've got this fully responsive format so you can open this as wide as you want or you know watch it on a phone like this the first thing you want to do when you first log in to cloud movie machine is go in here and click here to add an account and that takes you to the account section that i mentioned in the previous video now this is the most boring part and you can really just breeze through this if you want to just you can even just say my test account or whatever or you can spend as much time as you want filling out this info if you just want to get to the uh, you know to making videos you're not worried about other stuff you can just <laughs> put anything you want in here really and um, you know if you've got a website you put it there or whatever so you can set your geolocation now if you are interested in seo you're going to fill these things out and you're going to also put in your geolocation because this will be provided to your videos when you upload to youtube so it's a good idea to have that info but if you're not concerned about seo you know don't don't worry about this but i've got that set now you do not need to put your own s3 credentials in i th I'll probably should take this out for now at some point you can use your own but right now we're just using our storage so once you have that just go ahead and save that is you know as complicated or as simple as you want just to get started i will tell you later about how to set up a strategy using accounts for your seo and so forth you probably if you are involved in SEO you probably already realize that you can set up different niches under different accounts and then when it's time to set up your sharing accounts you just come to the sharing page and you set up your uh, connections to all your sharing and your syndication over here but right now we're going to skip that instead we're going to go right to the video section so you can get started making videos so we'll click on that go to video section just like with the accounts there are just a few cursory values you need to fill out and say before you really get to the fun part you can spend as much time in this as you want or as little time as you want and you could come back later and work on this before queuing your video we can say if it says no or new template new or no template that means you have to create that so that it has an id for the project and you may have more than one account listed up here so before you create your new video make sure you're doing it under the account that you want it to appear under because that's more or less final once you make that decision you can't move the project from one account to another once it's made so if you want it to be under another account click on that other account and the page will come back and then create your video under that account as it is now i only have the one account so i'm just going to create and you can see it's already filled out my values from the same thing the defaults that i put into the account profile now this is going to be for a video so i can change this now as much as i want or as little as i want 
And this headline is basically uh, programmed into the YouTube keyword tool so you can get ideas. This is all for SEO, folks. If you're not concerned with SEO, don't spend any time on this. But if you are concerned with SEO, definitely spend some time with it. So I have to click Save. We're going to get to the fun part in just a second. But after I've saved this, and really it should say, you know, it should say my test video, not my test account. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to my test video and put that in the headline as well. And then save that again. Now it's called my test video. So I could have done that the first time, save myself some time. But now we're all ready and this pops up so we can go to the video designer. Once we get to the video designer, what we're shown is our timeline. And of course, there's nothing on the timeline yet. So what we need to do is create some content. So I'm going to show you a few different ways. Basically, I'm going to show you all the ways you can create content now. Now, here are all the sources. And you click on sources, we've got tons of sources here. And we'll be adding new sources as well. And if you're a subscriber that you have new sources, new uh, source material being added to these selectors every month. And in fact, if you're a subscriber, you'll have another list here for the premium images. Every month you'll have more premium images and more stock video if you are a subscriber. Right now we're starting with more or less the basics. So you'll see here the first one that we're looking at is the effects blacklight in the images department. And there are two buttons under each entry with the thumbnail. So you can see which thumbnail. Now these are going to be stationary images. They're not motion. They're just stationary images. But you can show this image for a specific amount of time or you can just add it to your timeline. Right now the default image clip length is seven seconds unless you want to do something special with that image in which case you can do that by clicking this edit button right here by doing that it's going to open up our cloud moving machine clip generator now this is the image and remember it is a static stationary image but we can now make a video clip from that image for a certain amount of seconds up to 30 seconds. Let's say I want to make a 15, let's say a 12 second video clip. Now I can choose whether I want that clip to fade in and out at the beginning or the end. If I want to show my headline on that, I can do that. And I can change the color of the headline. I can actually change the headline itself. And I can also show my URL. I can also make the URL scroll if I want to do that. I won't do that right now. We also have this feature box over here so you can show a special message in the video. You can have that special message come in just a few seconds into the video instead of starting out in the, right on there. So you can basically have all this other stuff and have that feature box message pop in at three seconds in and go away three seconds before the end. So it should come in at three seconds and go out at nine seconds, basically. So once we're happy with our settings like that, we can come down here and click the generate clip. And we do that and it just takes a few seconds to process that request, create the clip and put the clip on our timeline and there it is so now we have this clip if i wanted to see what that clip looked like i can click publish now and then generate the preview and that's going to show me what that clip looks like and for it shows us like a kind of a thumbnail right at the very beginning but if you can see at the beginning of the video it does fade in and in three seconds my message pops on and then three seconds from the end, it pops off again. So that's how we make a clip like that. Now we can go back to sources and we can select any niche that we have in here and we'll see all these images. We can do exactly the same thing. 
Or if you don't want to add any feature and you just want it for the default time, you just click the add button and that automatically places that image on our timeline too. As you can see, it's not a clip. It doesn't have the clip um, edges like this. It just shows as an image. That means it will be created in a clip when the video is made, but just for seven seconds and no other features. We can actually look at that just for the heck of it. Let's take a, a moment to create that preview. And you can see fading in with our first clip, the feature box message pops on. It pops off. It fades down. The next one fades in and making the clip from that image that I added. Okay, so no, neither of these are really striking my fancy. So I'm just going to click both of them and delete select it. Okay, so we're going to go and do some other things now. I'm going to go over to the stock video clips here and we have these different sets that we've collected also you know free to use so you can just add the clip as is by clicking the plus button and however long it is we don't really know the length unless we open that clip in the clip designer by clicking the editor button here and it comes up and it tells you here exactly how long that clip is it's six seconds so we can click another one and now this clip is only two seconds this one is 15 seconds, so that might be a nicer kind of clip to work with. And as we open that in the clip designer, you notice here we can actually make that clip shorter or longer if we want to, because if we change the clip length here, Cloud Movie Machine is going to create a clip of that length by either looping that video if necessary or cutting it down if necessary where you can just leave it at 15. You can add the same kind of feature box the same way we did on the image video, or we can also put our headline and our URL on it like that. Or you might not want to, let's say you just want a 10 second clip of this and you select the 10 seconds and you click generate clip down here. So now we'll have a 10 second cut from that 15 second clip. And if you want to see what that looks like, we can just go back and regenerate the preview. And it'll take just a moment to basically show us what we've got now. Okay, so we've got that clip. And I'm going to just go ahead and and delete that. But let's say I wanted to do, you know, a whole bunch of different clips together. All I would really have to do is just do click the plus button on this one, click that one, click this one, and you know, whatever other one I want, let's say this one down here. And now if I go back to my timeline, you can see that I've got those four clips on here and I can now go to publish now and regenerate that preview. And of course, the more material that you add to your timeline, the little bit longer the preview takes every time you add a little bit more because it's definitely a process on the back end. But that was pretty fast. So as soon as that thing stops spinning around, you'll see the video. Okay, so there's our first video with the candle. And that's what a 15 second clip, we already know that because we saw that in the editor. So then it cuts to the, the automobiles. And not sure how long that goes for.
and then it cuts to the ocean clip. So you get the idea. It, it really is a video editor and you can choose the length of the clips by generating those clips and you can also uh, you know put them in the order you want clip them together now you notice that ocean clip actually has a fade out at the end so it doesn't look that great so you might want to cut off that fade out if you wanted to actually fade into the next one and not have that one fade out so let's say you wanted to do that what you're going to do is come over here and open that in the clip editor it's 12 seconds so let's say we just want to cut it down to nine seconds and that'll cut off the uh, the fade out at the end okay so we'll just generate that clip takes a moment and now that clip appears on the timeline I'm going to delete this one so I didn't like that fade out that it had what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put this at the beginning. You can just drag and drop them like that till you have them in the right order that you want. And let's see, I'll put this one, I'll put this one second. So now we're going to go for this nine second ocean clip to the car clip. And I'm going to basically put on fade between clips. And this is something you may want to play around with and try you get a different effect if you fade between the clips so now let's see how our nine second ocean clip fade it doesn't fade out but it will fade directly into the cars just a moment for our preview to be generated and now we will see how that worked out If this is spinning, it means the video is downloading to your browser. Okay, so here we go. And four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it fades to the next one without that blackout fade. And then you'll see this car clip fade to the next clip very nicely. Not cutting directly, but fading because we put that fade between clips. And there's a fade to the candle. So that's very nice. So, so there's that tool that you can use. Now I showed you how to put uh, overlays over an individual clip or image by using this editor and adding that to the clip itself. But there's another way if you want to add those features to the entire video what you're going to do is open the feature designer and you'll notice here it says in this screen these features will be applied to your entire video so just just as a demonstration I'm not saying you want to do this but just as a demonstration let's just show you how that works we'll put on our URL and we'll put a feature box it can also be uh, transparent but we'll make that non-transparent. You can also change the background color of the feature box and the font color to be whatever you want. So just for fun, let's do it like that. And I will so make that Arial, make that Arial. And I will save the options like this. And then we're done with that. That means now, when I do my preview, I'm going to have the, these features that I had set will be put over the entire video. So let's regenerate that preview and see how that works. Or just a moment for the backend processes, and it will be a little bit longer now because we're asking for extra features on top of the video clip edit and the video comes back and it's downloading to my browser and here we go you can see now 
basically that those features that we added are now on the entire video depending on what your type of marketing is you might want to use something like that or you might not actually it might be better to just add the features to the individual videos in which case what we want to do is we want to turn off these features again so we don't want them to appear now so we're going to go here we're going to turn off the headline make sure the url is off turn off the feature box and save that now when we recreate that preview we won't see those messages over the entire video again and as you can see here is the clip now once again and it does not have those options over it it's just the clip so you if you do save them once you need to more or less unsave them to turn them off again unless it's a new project in which case it'll have brand new settings for that now the upload section here is for uploading your own images and these images will become image clips as the one that i showed you in the beginning of this video and we have a couple of other ways of making content for your videos a lot of people use PowerPoint type slides in their videos and we have a great way for you to do that we have two ways for you to make PowerPoint slides we have this awesome slide creator where you can actually design your own images and slides on a canvas and we also have this text-based PowerPoint designer first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to make a cool PowerPoint type slide in the slide creator so let's go ahead and open that up and here is the procedure over here you're going to do is you can select it from different groups of fonts right now i've got the serif selected so let's say i want to use them a, a uh, i'm going to use source sans pro and you'll notice an object appears here on the canvas but it's there's nothing in it until you click color and you select a color you must select the color and then once you do that, you can click save, and now you've got this text object to work with, at which point you can uh, size it, move it around the screen, whichever way you want. You can like twist it like this. Of course, double click and and create that clip. I mean, create, sorry, I mean, create that message for yourself. Now you can also add some other cool things here. You can add shapes. You can add these cool little icons. And there's several different um, categories for that including like speech bubbles so you can add speech like let's see if I added this one and then I can go back to my text and I can add a text field and you want to make sure that you're not selecting one of the other objects and then just click the font and choose the color and save and now you've got this and I can now put this into my speech box and you can be saying that ha it's fun a lot of fun things you can do with this now if over here if you've got this layers it's a lot like Photoshop you can actually turn off layers and see where they are you can trash the layers or you can address them with properties or you can make the layers go away by clicking this layers here now once you're happy with your slide 
you're going to click save to timeline. Now, if you click JPEG, it's going to be just like any image that you choose and it'll open in the clip generator. If you choose PowerPoint clip, it's going to do something really special. What it's going to do is take the background color that you've created your slide with and create a video clip of that color and then fade your slide in from that background and then fade it out again. It's really actually really good. So let's go ahead and create one of those PowerPoint clips from this awesome slide that I just made. Okay, and it just takes a moment. And as soon as it's done, that slide clip, it's actually a clip now, gets deposited on my timeline. So I would like to take a look at what that looks like. And to do that, I think I'm just going to go ahead and uh, delete these clips. So we'll have a short preview. And to do that, we just click Publish Now and Generate Preview. And first it shows you the thumbnail, but you'll see the fade start when the video starts actually starts to play. There you go. So it starts with that white screen. It actually starts with a fade because we have the fade between clips selected. And then it fades into that slide. And it's there for the eight seconds. And then there's a fade into our ocean. And remember, we had clipped the end of that ocean so it doesn't fade to black. And instead, it fades directly to our next clip. So that's how that works. You can make PowerPoint galore with that slide creator. Now, we also have one other cool way to make PowerPoint slides it's called the we called it the PowerPoint Designer. I think we're gonna we're gonna change the name of that since we have the slide creator now. But so I have some text I've created, more or less prepared for this demonstration. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a PowerPoint slide for each line of text that we put in here. You have to remember that it takes about 15 seconds for each line of text to be processed into a clip, maybe a little bit more. So it could be a minute or two for all this to be working after I click the button. So I'm gonna do though, it's gonna be, I'm gonna make it two seconds, fade in and fade out. Now let's make it one and let's say seven seconds per slide. We can change the background color and the font and the font color, but I'm just going to leave it the default now. Black background, I mean, black font color and white background. So you click Generate Slides. And yes, it's going to take a few moments to do that, as I said. And once the slides are generated, they will be deposited on the timeline with your other material that you've been saving for the project. And there they all are. So now we have all these slides that we just made. Tell you what, I know these are awesome clips, so I'm going to delete them just so that we can watch the PowerPoint and let me go ahead and tell you what, I'll keep this one and we'll delete those other two clips for now. All right, so now we have this first one with the image and then it's going to go to my PowerPoint slide. So I'm going to turn off the fade between clips because these all have a white background. They don't need to fade into each other. They're going to look great without that. Also, we'll lose uh, a little time from that fade. So now we'll have the, the full clip and no fades between clips. Just take a moment to process uh, all those clips together into one video and then it's going to play it for us. Here we go. Downloading that video and starting with the white, fading in with the first clip. 
fading out again and then fading into our new PowerPoint slides that we just made. And you can see now it'll fade out and fade back into the next one. And this is how a lot of people really like to do their PowerPoint type of slides of clips. And that works pretty nice. Okay, so now you can see how you can make the PowerPoint video fairly easily using all these tools. So now we've made PowerPoint slides in two different ways. There's a couple more ways to, to make content. Of course, I have the screen grab function. You can get a screen grab image of any website and then deposit it on the timeline. You can also clip video from any video that you have stored on S3 or YouTube using our clip editor. And then that will put the clip directly in your timeline too. I'll show you how to do that really quickly. Let's say I have some kind of uh, video on S3. Could be anything, but let me, let me just pick this sort of a tutorial that I was, had at one point. And you gotta make sure that it has read permission. So I'm using this software called S3 Browser. And it lets me, you know, set the permissions on files. So we've got this one set to read. I'm gonna just copy that URL. And I'm going to click add video and put that URL into this box and import it to the clip editor like this. Now you can see it's listed up here and it's going to show you two images. Over here you've got a time slider and what you're going to see in here is the frame that's selected by this slider here. And what you're going to see here is the frame that's selected by the ending slider. So what you're doing is you're defining a range in this video clip and it, the timing is told to you down here it's 127 to 403. I, I don't want to get a huge clip so I just want a smaller clip so let's say this is about a mm, let's get about a 30 second now let's make it really fast and just make it a 23 22 second clip let's see if we can get something a little more interesting Okay, so that is like a 26 second clip. Now all I have to do now, if I want to watch that, I can click this and play it, but I can also just cut the timeline. So I'm just going to cut this little bit and it's going to go to and become a clip in my timeline at the end of the timeline. So let's just go ahead and cut that to our timeline by clicking this button right here. And Jake just a few moments and as you can see here it says the clip has been added to your timeline and you look at the timeline and here indeed is that clip deposited at the end exactly what we cut right from this video here we can go ahead and just have a look at what we cut you want to put that up at the top here and then do a quick preview. <clears throat> and then having placed that clip at the beginning of the timeline, we'll be able to see right away what it looks like just for the heck of it. So we can see what we're dealing with. And here we go. And this is the clip. From me uh, making that presentation. Remember the previews are fairly low quality. This would be much higher quality when you actually do cue the video. The, the previews are kept low quality for you to see them quickly. So there you go. You can see my video cut that I clipped and then it's going to come back to the other videos. Now I just noticed that by putting that clip in the beginning it sort of distorted the uh, dimensions of the other videos. So what you want to do is have the right dimensions first and the clip first. The first clip will pretty much determine the dimensions. So as we go from this one into 
the next clip which is the clip that I cut from that video you can see that now this video has been resized to fit with my other video so it has to be that way we could also possibly crop or uh, pad it but right now it's just going to resize whatever clip to the first clip okay so we've covered a lot of different ways to make visual content in cloud movie machine we've gone over how you can use the image libraries we've got a ton of images here folks sometimes when you have a chance just go through all these different uh, topics that we have you can just choose any image in here and create a clip from it if you do have the premium subscription you're going to see another selector here which is a whole ton of other niches in the images and of course we've looked at the stock video clips we've looked at creating with the slide creator and with the powerpoint designer we've looked at the clip editor We've looked at making uh, clips from actual video clips and putting it, them in there. What I haven't really shown you yet is the motion background. So I'll just go ahead and show you how we might use some of those just for fun. And what these are are just small clips of animation backgrounds. Now you can use them for your messages or for whatever you want. And I have my favorites and we'll be adding more. And you'll also receive extra ones of these as a premium member. But the idea is just to pick some interesting background and then you can put, some, put a message over it. Now, one of my favorites here is called Acid Fumes. I'm not sure why Dad named it that, but uh, it's really electrical. So what I'm going to do is open this into the clip generator here and I'm going to create a little message. My message is going to say it's electric. <laughs> and that's what it's going to say. So I'm going to have this uh, it's electric uh, come in three seconds into this electrical clip and then it's going to disappear three seconds from the end of the electrical clip. I will go ahead and put the headline. I kind of like doing it this way with a kind of a ghostly instead of it really, really being really definite, I sort of make it a ghostly thing. The same with the URL, I like to do this and maybe we'll give it a little bit more brightness there. And so this is a nine second clip. I'm gonna stretch this out and make it 12 seconds. Let's make it 14 seconds. So it'll be a 14 second clip, three seconds in this its electric message will appear and three seconds from the end it will disappear. Let's make it a little bit shorter actually. Let's make it 12 seconds again. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate that clip. And it takes just a few minutes for our Q uh, server to process the request and place that clip on your timeline. And when it's done, the clip will be deposited right at the end of the timeline. So let's have a look at that. Like, let's go ahead and drag and drop that to the beginning so we can just regenerate our preview and see how that looks. And here we go. Remember, this is just the thumbnail. As long as this is spinning around, the video has not started playing yet. Here we go. You can see the electricity coming in and bam, the message box comes on. It goes for another few seconds and then bam, it goes away. Then we cut right to the next clip. Actually, we're fading because I have fade between clips. And you can see how smooth that is when it just fades from the one slide into the next clip. Okay, so that's how we do our motion backgrounds and you can do a lot with that. It's really the imagination is the only limit on what you can really do with this stuff. Now the next thing that I'm going to talk about is the audio section and I'm going to do that in another video because it takes a little while to go through this.